Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore video and today we are going to take a look at what happened to the Quagoa and why it really didn't need it to. But before we are going to take a look at the beginning of the end, let's take a look at my Patreons and thank them for supporting this channel. Furthermore, I say thanks to all users of the YouTube thanks function who made one-time donations. Now with that said, let's start with the main order Einzelgon gave to Sheltir and Aura. If the Quagoa could be made to submit without bloodshed, then that would actually be fine by Eins. But in the likely case that they are acting up and trying to fight Eins Ulgon's mighty forces, Eins felt that it was needed to cull them down to a more manageable level. The reason for this is that Eins ever since arriving at the Zelesian Mountains and the Dwarf in Holdouts has noticed that the Quagoa were an aggressive, expansionistic and fairly low-tech civilization. In other words, they had not much to offer except their lives to Eins. But since they are so powerful by comparison to the Dwarves, it would be hard to actually make them see why they should submit to the Sorcerer King without an additional help. Hence why Einzelgon gave the additional order that if they refuse to submit, Shelty and Aura were tasked with culling them down to just 10,000 individuals. 4,000 men, 4,000 women and 2,000 kids. The other 50,000 Quagoa would be killed. And this is a loss rate of over 83%. For comparison, the Royal Army numbered around 260,000 people on the field of the Cuts Plain and lost 180,000 men, which is a loss of only, in quotation marks, only 70% of the entire army. So to the Quagoa, it was worse than the massacre of the Cuts Plain. Especially because the Quagoan army was basically all the Quagoa living in the Zelesian Mountains, while the Kingdom of Riestais still had millions of people living within its borders. And if Shelty would have actually bothered to demonstrate her power by, for example, challenging just hundreds of the strongest warrior of the Quagoa to a fair fight only to kill them within seconds, or maybe by shattering some rocks with her lance or summoning a 10th tier undead just to demonstrate how strong she is. It would have surely made the Quagoan at least reconsider the author at hand. But without proof of the strength of Shelty and Aura, Periuru couldn't accept to just surrender meekly, because his own strength, position and honor would be drawn into question. And Shelty at this point wanted to do nothing more than to prove herself ever since her mind control incident. An incident that was only possible because Sheltier accidentally caused path with the black scripture. Something that wouldn't have happened if Sheltier wasn't so cocky and arrogant and fell into the blood frenzy status. Something that Sebas even warned her about, but that Sheltier smugly dismissed as a non-issue. Without Sheltier losing so much self-control, she would have noticed the second exist existing and therefore blocked it by, let's say, one of her vampire slaves and never have sent out her familiars to hunt down brain anglaus and others who might have escaped. The same summons that were killed by the black scripture actually triggered the encounter between them and Sheltier. And with all of that said, Sheltier wanted to battle amidst bones and blood in order to prove that this time she was serious and wouldn't succumb to the blood frenzy status simply by sucking up the blood with her lance. So once the Quagoa failed to instantly submit to Sheltier, she and Aura agreed to directly go to the second phase of the plan and call the Quagoa. Now this is all well and good but it raises the question why didn't the Quagoa just simply stop attacking? Well, Periu put them into a frenzy mode of its very own, basically supercharging the battle lust and bravery of every single Quagua around him, so that they would engage even with a monstrously strong enemy. Something that Periu came to regret instantly, since now he had to do battle, and could only hope that his most elite warriors could turn the tide of the battle, which didn't happen. And the hope that 
Shelty would tire, as an undead, was also completely in vain. As for the flight option, while it was briefly considered, Peri Yuru just knew that against this enemy, retreat was not an option, and unbeknown to him, it really wasn't a possibility even without Shelty and Aura, for Aura used a world class item, the scroll on her back, to be more precise, and it is called Depiction of Nature and Society, and holds multiple worlds inside of it and capture enemy within, so basically like the painted worlds of Dark Souls. And while there's an exit, at least in the novels, it was well guarded by Hanzos, because if one could exit the labyrinthian painting, then the ownership of the world item would transfer to whoever was able to leave. By the way, this is also how Eins Ulgon got a hold of it in the first place. And this was also how Eins planned to capture Sheltier's attacker, when he was engaging Sheltier seemingly alone and without much in the way of backup. But in the end, the Quagoa, who wanted to eradicate every single dwarf, lost more than 80% of their people, and were made into a subject species of Eins Ulgon. Fun fact and spoiler alert, this led to Jerknuf gaining something that he never had. A friend, for Periuru and the Emperor of Barut had normally nobody on their own level to talk to, but now bonded over their common subjugation by the hand of Eins. So much so, that they became very close. And this was also something that could be seen as a happy ending for both of them. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching, and special thanks to... Dash 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 Bad Guy Bad Burrito 316 B Zer Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devin Downen Ding Dong Duck Wagon Dystopia Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Theral Shivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Normal Toad, O'Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus 11, Cune Karakos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rack at Smasher, T.E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon on my next video.